Should your coaches be paying for a membership? Like so many questions in your gym, the answer is it depends. And instead of just taking the opinion or the advice of somebody that you met online, we're going to look at the numbers. I'm Chris Cooper. I'm the founder of Two Brain Business. We like making decisions based on data. And so today I'm going to share some numbers with you to help you make this decision for yourself. If this is helpful to you, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or leave a comment below so that we know and we'll keep producing content like this. So we're going to do some really simple math. If you follow our state of the industry guide, you'll see exactly what the average price per class is paid to a coach. And we're talking about group classes. So this is applicable to CrossFit, but it's also applicable to yoga, to spin, to high intensity interval training, to boot camp, what uh, nine round, like whatever type of gym you're running. If you're running group classes, the average group class rate is about 22 bucks per class. Now that might seem low and that might also tempt you to add on top of free membership. So here's how to calculate what your coaches are actually being paid when you roll in all of these things together. So let's start with putting in your hourly class rate, okay, 22. Then what you want to do is you want to add in the type of membership that your coaches are getting for free. So if they have like an unlimited membership for free, then put your unlimited membership price in this square. If they have uh, like a three times a week membership, then put that price in this square and you're going to get an accurate representation of what you're actually paying them. Then what you want to do is you want to say, how many hours are they coaching in exchange for that membership? Now, the interesting thing here is that some people um, don't actually like count this up. And so they, they don't have like, a, this should just say eight. They don't add this up and they don't actually spell out how many hours the coach should be coaching in exchange for their membership. And so what you have is you have some coaches who are doing like a consistent Monday and Wednesday class, you know, eight hours per month or whatever. And then you have other people who are coaching maybe 12 classes, but they're getting the same benefit. Like they're, they're getting the same free membership. And so they're actually getting paid less. I'm going to show you that example too. So let's start off with this. Somebody who is getting paid a class rate and they're also getting a free membership on top. You throw their the value of their free membership in here. Okay, 160 bucks a month, let's say. And they're coaching two classes a week to earn that. Well, what they're actually being paid is a total value value of 42 bucks per hour for doing that class because they are getting paid and they're getting the value of that membership too. Okay. So <clears throat> now why is this problematic? You know, okay, maybe this is a great way to pay people 42 bucks an hour. It's problematic because now the cost of paying somebody else to run that class is actually higher than the value of the coach doing it themselves. And now you get trapped into coaching more classes because it really is cheaper for you to do it yourself. How do I know this? Well, we use something that's called the six strategies audit. And one of the things that we calculate is the value of an owner's time. And we calculate this based on the average gym owner's salary and the time that they spend working. And so if the average gym owner is making less than $35 per hour that they spend working on their gym, the cost of paying a coach 42 per hour to take one class for them exceeds what the gym owner makes. So now it's actually more expensive to pay the coach. They're making more money for that hour than the gym owner would. And the gym owner is going to revert back to coaching that class. Okay. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that you might have people who are just trading their membership for coaching. Okay. Now this is also problematic. So let's take away this hourly rate per class and let's calculate like what they're actually trading here. So let's say that you don't spell out how many classes they have to exchange for their membership. And now you've got one coach who's like, well, you know, I know I started out coaching twice a week, but I can really only do Fridays now. And you say, okay, you know, you're going to coach four classes per month. Okay. So now they're getting paid 40 bucks per class, but you've got other coaches who are also trading their membership and maybe they're doing two classes a week. All right. Why are those people getting paid half what the other coaches are, are getting paid, right? Like, are they providing half of the value? And yeah, that's how you have to think about this is like the exchange of value. The value that they're providing is coaching a group class. They are following your programming, your direction. They're following probably your warm up. They're following um, the, 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 
certification methods that you may be paid for. They're using your insurance, your space, your equipment, your clients, and they're de delivering on your template. But the value that they are giving you or you're giving them in exchange for doing that is their membership. And that membership has to be calculated by the time that they're spending. So now let's take a look at somebody else who's like, I love coaching. I can do three classes a week, or I'll take all of your Wednesday night classes for a total of 12 classes per month. But they're receiving the same value from you in exchange that the person who's coaching one class a week gets, which is the value of their membership at $160 per month. So now they're getting like 13 bucks a class and they're maybe your favorite coach because they're doing the most work. Okay. Now what happens if you do spell this out and you say, okay, minimum eight classes per month for your free membership. All right. We go back to that 20 bucks a class. It's a little bit lower than what the average class rate is, but okay. You're close. And you know, maybe they don't have to declare it on their taxes or whatever. Um, but then they say, okay, well, I've got to take a holiday. Okay. So they, they missed two weeks that month. Do they still get their free membership? Yeah, but now, you know, they're really only coaching like eight classes or four classes because, hey, you know, they missed two weeks that month. So now they're actually getting paid more. And you could argue like, okay, well, maybe they didn't use their membership that month either. But unless you're you're giving people like two weeks off their membership, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, it just doesn't work out that way. So um, next you have to look at like, what are you actually paying per class? Well, if you're saying that like a membership is worth four classes or eight classes or 12 classes or 16 classes per month, okay, then you have to figure out like what that hourly rate actually is. And what I'm saying you're actually better to do is figure out what that rate would be, okay? What rate do you want to pay per class? What rate fits under your 44% salary cap? And start with that rate, okay? Then what you do is you say, I am going to pay you this rate for coaching classes and you are going to pay me a membership. If you're doing less than so many classes per month, maybe that's 20, um, you know, it's just a cash exchange. And this is what money was actually invented for was to create a fair exchange of value in a measurable, trackable, objectively measurable way. And so you pay them and they pay you. And then at the point where they exceed, you know, like whatever their membership is worth, uh, so if you're paying them 25 bucks a class and um, your membership is 160 bucks and they coach nine classes for you that month, or, or sorry, that's uh, seven classes for you that month, then they've got their membership paid for and they've earned an extra $15. And if they only coach six, then they've got, you know, $150 and they owe you 10 bucks at the end of the month. Like this is how fair exchange of value actually works. Now, let's say that you want to move toward more full-time coaches who want to make a career. Then you need to decide at what point is their membership included, okay? And for us, that typically would be when they're working at least permanent full-time or half-time. So they're, they're coaching like 20 classes a week. So let's say that their membership is not included. They're coaching uh, 20 classes a month, sorry. And now they're getting 25 bucks Per class, okay, at 20 classes per month, that's $500 per month. And now you say, okay, look, like you're, you're actually coaching quite a bit for us. I'm going to give you this additional benefit. Instead of giving you a raise, I'm going to give you this benefit of a free membership of 160. Okay. Now there are other things in the mix here too. Okay. Like um, salaries are also in the mix and the, you can watch our other videos on that topic. There are things in the mix, like who pays if you know, vacation has to be covered. There are other things like Ascension models. Like, do you pay people based on the value that they deliver? Or do you pay people based on the time that they've spent or the certifications that they've earned? It's not the same thing. But when you're making this decision, I want you to have the math in front of you. And I want you to understand like what fair exchange of value actually means and how much you're actually paying your staff per class if you give them a free membership. From there, you can make your own decision, but it's our job to arm you with the numbers it's our job to mentor you if you're in our mentorship program to making the decision that takes care of everybody, starting with your clients and the owner and the staff person. Hope the math helps.